I'm Susan McGinnis in the Energy News Center. A new poll shows support for nuclear power at a record high. More Americans apparently favor nuclear power to meet the nation's electricity needs. Growing support for expanding nuclear loan guarantees and DOE's recent award of more than $8 billion for guarantees for two reactors in Georgia suggests this so-called nuclear renaissance could be gaining momentum. Dr. Jim Conka is director of the Carlsbad Environmental Monitoring and Research Center at the College of Engineering at New Mexico State University here to talk about nuclear energy, give us his perspective on that and some other sources of energy. Jim, it's good to have you back. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, you're in D.C. Um, meeting with the Commerce Department and the Congressional Research Service. You're going to be talking about uh, the cost of energy and different energy sources. Right. And uh, tell us tell us your view of this life cycle cost of energy. Well, first of all, there's three ways to look at cost. There's the value of what you're trying to buy. There's the actual cost of it. And then there's how you finance it. And they're very, very different. And in the past, uh, if, if you're going to buy something, you, you, it's a very large ticket, like a billion dollars or seven billion dollars, you have to finance that. And how you finance it, as we've seen in the last few years, is, is, is kind of tricky. And if you, if you don't have all your ducks in a row and, and you're not set up and everything's ready to go, when you get your financing and then you're held up for five or ten years, everyone goes bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's you know, This is very important with nuclear because the upfront right? cost is so high. Right. It's huge. So, so it's seven billion dollars. But once you build it, you get a huge amount of energy. So, so say you, you, you just pick a number out of the house. Say you want oh, a half a trillion kilowatt hours out of some some system, whether it's an array or a farm or, or a unit, you want to you want to build something that's going to give you a half a trillion kilowatt hours over its lifespan. So how much is that going to cost? And it turns out when you, when you do the entire life cycle cost, not just the construction, but the fuel and the O and M and and, and, and the de de decommissioning cost, you find out. It's very different than what you think. Okay, again, the, the the alternatives to fossil fuel, the longer you run them, the more cost effective they become because most of their costs are up front. You're so talking about nuclear and nuclear, renewables. wind, solar, yeah, the whole thing. And so you say the fossil fuels uh, actually get more expensive the, the longer you run them. More expensive longer you run it because you have to fuel them every single so day. So what's the cheapest to build and run? Um, uh, nuclear, wind, and hydro are the cheapest to build. Okay, and and and, and then to run as well. I'm sorry, no. to, coal, to coal nuchlear, and hydro, the cheapest to build up right. front. To run over that life cycle is wind, nuclear, and hydro. The okay. most expensive is gas. Wow. So um, the other big issue, other than uh, the cost, is uh, of course the waste issue. Right. Um, now with Yucca Mountain effectively off the table, what do you see are the best prospects for for new potential sites for for nuclear storage? Um, Secretary Chu, uh, you know, is not saying that different uh, that burying this stuff is the best possible right. alternative because it could eventually all be reused. Right. And, and the, the nice thing about the Blue Ribbon Panel that's, that's now been chosen is, is, is meeting this week actually in D.C. for the first time is that everything's on the table. Let's step back and say you know, we, we've had a kind of a a, a patchwork of, of, of laws and agreements and things that have built up over the years are not very coherent. And so let's just step back and say, what do we want to do in the next 30 or 40 years, and what's the best way to do that? So, so the alternative to yucca is not the only thing the panel is. Oh yeah, on. absolutely. In, in, interim storage, or are, are we going to do fast reactors? Are we going to recycle or not? That, so that the, kind of the scrapping of yucca is uh, you don't see as a big obstacle to this nuclear renaissance. No, in in in, in fact, you know that that was a, a political decision made. You know. 20 to 30 years ago, it wasn't a very good decision, and it was made for, for for political reasons, not scientific reasons. And that's why it's nice to see now, again, in, in, in this administration, science is back. So now we can all start actually thinking rationally again, instead of just the the, the, the first shot is, is, is politics, and then you use science to kind of fill in the gaps. That's not the way to do it. So you see technology eventually coming in and making um, all of it reusable. I mean, well, and in the meantime, what is what's our what are our best options? Okay. I mean, there's the, some chemically nasty stuff out there. Right. The, and there's two, two types of waste. There's actually spent fuel, which is not very nasty. It's actually solid. It's easy, easy to shield, easy, easy to store. Just put it aside. Uh, wine, cheese, and spent fuel get better with age. It's one <laughs> of the few things. So you know, it, it's better to let it cool off. And then whatever you decide to do with it 50 years from now, do with it. There's a lot of high-level waste that is not spent fuel, not usable. It's really junk, trash, slugs, that and kind of thing. And the only place now Mexico. taking radiologically hazardous waste is yeah. New Mexico. Well, yes. And, 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 and that, that's, that's been licensed and permitted for defense waste only. So it's bomb waste. Okay. So, so you see that being expanded? Well, and, and not whip is whip, so so it has a well-defined mission. It's it, it's already permitted. Everything. Don't don't touch that. But of course, and that's there's the waste lots, isolation pilot right. project in and New that, Mexico, and that's in salt, in, which is a great medium. So, and there's lots of salt. There's 10,000 square miles of salt. So, so however the, the panel decides to go with it, they can recommend salt. However, they cannot 
uh, go around the site selection process, which is its own thing, so that they can't say, yes, put it here, put it there, but they can say salt's a great medium or clay's a great medium or That's something like that. That's what they're going to come out with instead of specific sites. Yes. They, in fact, they're not really allowed to, to choose a specific site because there is a, a legal site selection so process. We, okay. Right. So when do we see the sites, Jim? Oh, good question. <laughs> 18 months. 18 months. <laughs> they, they, they have about 18 months to come up with, with, with recommendations. Well, that, but those are not going to be recommendations on sites, you just said. No, they're, they're on kind of what we're going to do. What kind of formation? Yeah, what kind it? of formation. Or, or again, better yet is we'll, we'll, we'll put this aside in interim storage and let it sit there until we decide to either recycle it, which is one way to do it, or to go to fast reactors, which is the better way to do it. Okay, so looking at what's happening right now with nuclear loan guarantees, um, how do you see the pace of this nuclear renaissance going? It'll, it'll be slow because just like in, in anything, wind, solar, doesn't matter, the, the, the electric car, it takes about 30 years to actually make a dent in anything, which kind of sounds weird. So the first 10 years, you just get your act together. You get you know the, the manufacturing done, the workforce development, the, 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 the regulatory fast tracking. First 10 years, almost nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. But you set yourself up for the next 10 years where you really start rolling. Then the third 10 years, you can build thousands of them. In the meantime, we've got abundant coal. We've got very abundant new supplies of yes, natural gas. So, so what is your thought on that? That, that worries me. One, <laughs> we have lots and lots of fossil fuel. And, and, and if you do nothing with, with, with the alternatives, nuclear renewable, that matter. if you do nothing, tougher. it makes nuclear tougher. It, 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 it makes renewables tougher, except in the long run, it's more expensive. So why gas does, why is does it worry expensive. you? Why do you not see um, a natural gas, which is 50% uh, cleaner than coal? as, a, as Oh, a it's much, much cleaner, but it's also three times expensive. And, and we'll get more so. So uh, again, we have lots of, and it's still fossil fuel, so it, it, it's still, you know, but it's a CO2. If you care about that, that's, that's another issue. Um, moving on, do you, do you have any insight into this new uh, collaboration between Toshiba and Terra Power? I know you were with uh, Gates right. there in Washington right. at, his, uh, at his place, and we're talking now about that a lot of attention is going to these small self-contained modular reactors. Right. So, so again, step back and say, where do you want to be in 50 years? You want to have a, a good mix. You want to have fossil fuel, you want to have renewables, you want to have nuclear, about, about even, so about 30, 30, and 3rd. So how do you get there? The, the new generation three fat, uh, uh, light water reactors that are you know, like the Western House AP 1000, it's a great one, China's building four of them right now. Um, if, you, if you build those, that gets you over the energy hump. We need another 20 trillion kilowatt hours in the next 30 years. That's a huge amount of energy. Fossil fuel today produces 10 trillion, so we need twice as much as fossil fuel produces today. And my worry is if you don't get rolling, it's going to be filled with, with, by, by fossil fuel because mm -hmm. we have lots of fossil fuel. Right. So, so you need to get rolling. That just gets you over, over the hump. You, you, you don't want to be light water reactors for a thousand years. You need to get to the fast reactors, of which the Terrapar is one and, 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 uh, and uh, General Atomics EM Spirit is one. The point here is that they can, they can run for 100 fuel. years without being yeah, well, refueled? Well, well, yeah. Because I, they I, use, right, use right. They uranium. They run for decades without refueling and they burn even depleted uranium. And that can't be done in the large reactors? No, not, not at all. Because they are light, light water reactors. So this and, is the wave right. of the nuclear future? So it, you have 30,000 years of fuel okay. if you go to fast reactors. But we're not there yet. I mean, don't, don't, don't kid anyone. We're not right. there yet at all. So all right. it'll take 20 or 30 years to get there. Okay, a lot going on with nuclear and, uh, and everything. Well, good luck right. with your, uh, your talks in, uh, in, in uh, D.C. This thank week, you. Jim Conca, uh, New Mexico State University. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm Susan McGinnis with Clean Skies News.